So you want to start taking vitamin D supplements to support your bone health and immune system. Or maybe you are already regularly taking vitamin D supplements. Now there are tons of video out there telling you the benefits of vitamin D. But when I scroll down to the comment sections, viewers always have questions like how much I should take, how frequent I should take, what's the side effect, will I get too much vitamin D with supplements, sunlight, and diet? So here are six key things about taking vitamin D that I would tell everyone that I care. Let's first look at what are the recommendations for total daily vitamin D intake in adults. The current recommendation of vitamin D intake in adults is based on bone health. The Bone Health and Osteoporosis Foundation recommends vitamin D 400 units or 10 microgram to 800 units or 20 microgram daily for adults less than 50 years old and 800 units to 1000 units for older adults. The North American Menopause Society recommends women 51 to 70 to get 600 international units and over 70 to get 800 units daily. Now let's look at Canada. The Institute of Medicine in the US and Health Canada both agreed and recommend 600 international units or 15 micrograms daily for everyone one year old through age of 70 and 800 units for people over 70 years old. It is important to note that vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. Now, therefore, people with higher body fat may need to take two or three times more vitamin D than is generally recommended for their age group because a lot of the vitamin D would be distributed to the fat and not available in the serum. And suppose you take medicines that treat seizure disorders, steroidal drugs, antifungals, and HIV antivirals. Now in those cases, these medications can increase the breakdown of vitamin D, and you may also need more vitamin D than others. And number two, can adults get enough vitamin D from just sunlight? The skin produces vitamin D3 in response to sun exposure, but due to concerns about sun exposure and skin cancer risk, the American Academy of Dermatology does not recommend getting vitamin D from sun exposure or indoor tanning. They also recommend just getting your vitamin D from a healthy diet and also from supplements. And similarly, the Canadian Cancer Society also recommend getting vitamin D from diet or taking supplements, and it is safer than the UV ray exposure. And let's look at the third association, the Canadian Dermatology Association. Now they also say it is unsafe and unnecessary to increase sun exposure in order to maintain vitamin D levels. So they pretty much says the same thing, get your vitamin D in your diet and from supplements. Now here is the question, who routinely needs to take a vitamin D supplement? Now this question is a bit more complicated to answer because different organizations have slightly different recommendations and let's look at a couple of those. Now, Health Canada recommends that men and women over the age of 50 take 400 international units or 10 microgram vitamin D supplement daily. The Canadian Cancer Society recommends that adults consult their healthcare provider about taking a daily 1,000 international unit vitamin D supplement during fall and winter. They also suggest that people who have little sun exposure should talk to their prescriber about taking 1,000 international unit vitamin D daily year-round.
Osteoporosis Canada recommends routine supplementation with 400 to 1,000 international unit daily for adults 19 to 50 years of age, and those over 50 and younger adults at higher risk with osteoporosis, multiple fractures, or conditions affecting vitamin D absorption should receive 800 to 2,000 international unit daily. Now it is important to note that both Health Canada and the U.S. Institute of Medicine do not recommend routine supplementation with 1,000 international units per day of vitamin D. So this is some variation between different organizations. So please keep that in mind. Now, vitamin D supplements comes in D2 or D3 form. Does it matter whether it is a D2 or D3 supplement? Both vitamin D2 and vitamin D3 are effective for raising serum vitamin D levels, but vitamin D3 appears to be almost twice as potent. The Osteoporosis Society of Canada recommends D3 over D2. A meta-analysis of fracture studies also suggests vitamin D3 is more effective for reducing fracture risk. Now the upside of using vitamin D2 is that vitamin D2, 50,000 international unit, is available as a prescription product in the U.S. and insurance may cover it. Now vitamin D2, 50,000 international unit is also available by prescription in Canada. So I mentioned this 50,000 international unit. Well, who needs a Such a high dose of vitamin D. Vitamin D dosing for treating deficiency is different than for replacement. Now, according to this review article written by a physician, saying that for vitamin D deficient adults, fifty thousand international units of vitamin D two can be given once weekly for eight weeks for replenishment. Now, everyone should definitely consult a healthcare provider before taking. This high dose of vitamin D, and here I'm just referencing a source, and I'm not giving a recommendation of any kind. Now you may wonder, might an adult taking a supplement get too much vitamin D with sunlight and diet? The short answer is that it's not likely, but possible, and let's look at why. Excess sun exposure does not cause toxicity because too much sunlight will convert vitamin D3 into a non-active form, and the upper daily tolerable intake is 2,500 international units for children one to three years old, and for older children four to eight, the upper daily tolerable intake is 3,000 units, and for persons nine years old and older, the upper Daily tolerable intake is 4,000 international units, but there is an increased risk of kidney stones if a person also takes more than 2,100 milligram per day of calcium from food and supplements. And that was a lot of numbers. And let's have a summary slide to recap what I've just talked about. Now, the current recommendation of vitamin D supplements is based on bone health, and for most adults without known risk, the recommended daily dose is between 400 international unit to 1,000 international unit. And older adults at risk of bone fractures or younger adults that have problem with absorbing vitamin D. May need 2,000 international units, and people with higher body fat may also need two to three times more. And most cancer societies recommend against getting enough vitamin D through sun exposure due to increased risk of skin cancer. And vitamin D3 appears to be more effective for reducing fracture risk. But since vitamin D2 at 50,000 international units is a prescription product, insurance may cover it. And if a person is diagnosed with vitamin D deficiencies, 
doctor can prescribe 50,000 international units of vitamin D2 once weekly for eight weeks to replenish the vitamin D levels. Now, although it is unlikely to have vitamin D toxicity with daily intake below 10,000 international units, but when combined with high calcium intake, there is an increased risk of kidney stones development. So I hope this video helped answer some of the most commonly asked questions about vitamin D supplements. And if you would like to learn more about the product, please leave me a comment and let me know. And by the way, if you are first time here, my name is Dr. Hong and I teach full time in a US pharmacy school. And this channel is about wellness and health. And if you would like to follow on more about these information, please consider subscribing to this channel. And that is all for this week. And please stay safe, stay healthy. And I hope to see you again next time and take care. Bye.